If you like your movies cheap, splattery, and mostly nonsensical, you're in for a treat with today's sick flick. Welcome to Sick Flicks, where I take a deep dive into the cinematic sewer to help you embrace your inner gore geek. I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, and today we're tackling David Pryor's shot on video splatter flick, Sledgehammer. Released in 1983, Sledgehammer is one of the earliest examples of shot on video horror. While it's sometimes been heralded as the first film of its kind, it was definitely predated by titles like Boarding House, which released in 1982. Regardless, this is one of the better shot on video slasher flicks of that era. Which is sort of like saying you just ate a delicious plate of garbage. The story here feels ad lib, the acting is pretty dire, and the film abuses slow motion footage to pad the runtime, but I'll be damned if Sledgehammer isn't oddly charming in its ineptitude. Plus, it launched David Pryor's career. He went on to make Killer Workout and a bunch of low budget action movies that I love. But enough about that. Can Sledgehammer pummel enough dinner theater actors to earn a coveted five barf bag rating? Let's get to the gore and find out. Oh, and before we get started, today's video is sponsored by patrons Eleanor Marks, Jeremy E. Haig, and M. Gomez. If you'd like to help sponsor some videos and free me from the shackles of YouTube's tyranny, you'll find a link to my Patreon in the pinned comment in the description below. And now, let's get bloody. We fade in on some credits. Nicholas Imaz presents. I'm really sure I'd want to take credit for presenting Sledgehammer, but whatever floats your boat. Sledgehammer? I love that music video and the 80s cop show. <laughs> At least I think it says Sledgehammer. Oh yeah, if this is the kind of effects work we can expect from this movie, we might be screwed. Starring Ted Pryor. <laughs> Maybe overselling it a bit. John Eastman? Is that Luigi Montefiore's brother or another pseudonym? Hey, Steve Wright! I love that guy's stand-up. What? That's Steven Wright. Oh, my bad. Edited by Ralph Cutter. With a name like Cutter, he was clearly born to be an editor. Special effects by Blood and Guts. <laughs> At least the name is promising. Whoa, and a lighting director named Michael Watt. These have to be fake, right? I mean, if this movie was directed by Joe Director, I'm calling the cops. Oh, wait, directed by David A. Pryor. Presumably no relation to Richard. Oh, so wait a minute, the star of this movie is his brother. That's nepotism at its best, baby. And sweet, straight to the house establishing shot. This movie is gonna be magic, I can tell. Um, yeah, let's move it along. The house is established, David. Still here. Oh my god, are we still doing this? We're establishing the shit out of this house right now. Oh wait, zooming. Finally, we're inside. Damn it, Timmy, what did I tell you I'd do to you if you smoked my last Virginia Slim? It's nice that they decided to save money here by not investing in a microphone and just using the camcorder's mic. And you're not gonna say another word this evening! You're not gonna go Shut up! Sweet, they got the camera with the slow-mo effect. Honestly, I think the slow-mo was just to pad the runtime. This thing is only 84 minutes long, but judging by the first four, it's gonna be a long 84 minutes. I'm not really sure if this is a slasher movie or an R. Kelly biography so far. I'm gonna guess Slasher, because while the kid is trapped in a closet, there's not enough urinating here for an R. Kelly bio. Oh good, we're gonna waste 45 seconds establishing this goddamn door too. <laughs> yep, still a door. And scene. This guy has the right idea. We need a lot of booze to get through this one, and he's getting started early. Oh yeah, this totally feels like the snuff movie Henry shot in Portrait of a Serial Killer. Why is this all so grainy? Did they film it on a tape set to EP? So what do you think? Sexy enough for you? Oh yeah, baby. I love a lady filmed on an overused Maxell VHS tape that was also soaked in a vat of Vaseline and has tracking issues. Rawr. Jesus Christ, what's with the long robe? Is this dude wearing a dress? But before Freaky Time could commence, he wants to know about the kid. Where's the kid? Don't worry about the kid. Took care of that little bastard. Aw, oh, come on. Show her how to do it, Linda Day George. Man, this is the freakiest Married with Children episode ever. Steve and Marcy are really going to town. But look out, this is about to become a threesome. I'm your sledgehammer. Guess Al Bundy had enough of the Rhodes family. Man, there are more freeze frames in this movie than that Jay Giles Band song. Do you kids even remember the Jay Giles Band? Christ, I'm old. Oh, good, we're skipping ahead 10 years. I really wish I could skip ahead 84 minutes to the point where this movie is over. Oh god, long van driving scene. I'm getting rock and roll nightmare flashbacks. I do like that every scene in this movie has the same basic cinematography. Just put the camera on a tripod and shoot for half an hour. 
Turns out they're just driving the cast to the set. They're still excited because no one told them they're in Sledgehammer yet. Um, David, do we really need to watch them unload the van in real time? Yeah, this is random. This dude looks like the love child of John Oates and Ron Jeremy. And now it's time for another great moment in horror film acting. Can't we just forget about it for the next few days and have some fun? Jack, spending a few days up here isn't going to make me feel any different. Line reading's more wooden than a log cabin. You know what I want you to do. If the answer is put on a shirt and cut off that half-assed mullet, I'm with you, lady. Anyway, this guy's the lucky one. He's leaving. Wait, take me with you. And since Chuck's romantic overtures aren't working, he's just gonna put her in a headlock until she submits instead. Wait a minute, is that Diamond Dallas Page? Sweet slow-mo dissolve. Jay, we need more of this in our videos. Christ, this is like a Tampax commercial with the slow-mo and the sappy music. This is truly a masterclass in how to cheat to increase your movie's runtime. Oh my god, still walking in slow motion. <laughs> Maybe they'll eventually walk into the plot. Still walking. This is now officially longer than the house establishing shot from earlier. Diamond Dallas Page, Home Inspector. Yeah, these trusses are definitely dry rotten. Gonna have to replace the roof. Oh wait, maybe this is gonna be the DDP Yoga Studio. We could put some mats down here, get everyone downward dogging. Yeah, this guy's got the right idea too. Just get drunk. It's the only shot we have at surviving this. I think it's time we get pretty shit faced. <laughs> Save some for me. Please. Um, why does this feel like a home video of Ric Flair and Arn Anderson hanging out at the Red Roof Inn after a Jim Crockett promotions title bout in Spartansburg, South Carolina? I mean, look, Arn's like, I'm gonna spine buster this bud can. Honestly, they probably had to get them all drunk to get them in this movie. <laughs> oh boy, budget Ric Flair is trying to cut a rug. Styling and profiling. At any rate, I definitely feel like this AA meeting has totally derailed. And now Arn's gonna try out the gold dust Adrian Street gimmick, apparently. You can ride side saddle in my horse the any day snookum. <laughs> Top notch cinematography here, just a long shot of a blank wall. And dissolve to a shirtless dude playing guitar. Hold on to your panties, ladies. House establishing shot. And still zooming in. This movie is amazing in its ineptitude. Then his girlfriend shows up. Play Freebird! Too bad someone's creeping on them. I'm guessing it's the cameraman who's tired of this crappy guitar music. Or he's just lost. Could go either way. Oh my god, will something please happen in this movie? Great, now Pryor's just gonna film everyone eating at the craft services table. Seriously, this makes Rock and Roll Nightmare look like friggin' chariots of fire. It's not a total wash, though. We learned Dollar General Arn is really good at stuffing big things of meat in his mouth. Hell yeah. <laughs> no, not like that, you pervs. I mean this sandwich. I don't think this movie was scripted at all. I think they just showed up with a camcorder and filmed people acting like assholes. Hey, don't choke, Arn. You have to relax your throat and swallow. Don't act like this is new to you. Jesus, then this girl takes a load to the face. Hell yeah. No, of the sandwich. But that's still gross. And food fight. Where the hell is the sledgehammer? This really feels like one of those Springer Thanksgiving episodes, honestly. You shouldn't hit a woman. Definitely feel like this is not the first time these two have had to towel off after getting covered in goo. I ordered the Four Horsemen on Wish.com, and this is what they sent me. After a bunch of nonsensical jibber-jabber, Oates is like, sorry, I can't go for that, and bails. Somehow we're like a third of the way through this movie, and I have no idea why anyone is here at this location, who any of these people are, or when the killing is going to happen. A real masterclass in filmmaking so far. Oh wait, maybe we're finally going to get some killing at least. Huh, looks like Miley Cyrus has been here. Or maybe Triple H. Boom mic shadow. I'm stunned they actually had a boom mic. She's gonna get clean, but this guy's already in the shower. Looks like he got tangled up in his soap on a rope. Except it's a fake out. Oh shit, it's a ghost sledgehammer. Spooky. So, fun fact, the bulk of this movie was actually filmed in director David Pryor's apartment. House establishing shot. Not sure why, we never leave this damn house. Oh great, we're gonna establish it for 30 whole seconds again. <laughs> yep, still a house. Um, did I accidentally pause the movie, maybe? Inside, we're playing a little grab ass. Holy shit, sweet turntable. Forget the Techniques 1200s, I want two of these. And now it's dark. Say it with me, kids. Continuity is hard. But don't worry, he's got plans for the evening. A seance, you know, talking to ghosts and goblins, raising the dead, stuff like that. <laughs> they could summon up a better movie, I'm all for it. 
Oh God, wipe cut? Someone's pulling out all of the My First Video Editor tools. Submitted for the approval of the Midnight Society, I give you tonight's story. Sledgehammer. Oh God, did this movie just start over? Did it lap itself? I'm out in either case. This is definitely one way to pad the runtime. Just film 30 minutes and then loop that footage back in. Jesus, we really did start the whole movie over. This is bullshit. Anyway, we're still getting more exposition. The bones have been pounded over and over again by a madman with a sledgehammer. Peter Gabriel? Anyway, no one knows what happened to the killer or the kid. All in all, I like this scene way better when it was in Friday the 13th Part 2. Oh yeah, definitely getting John Michael Thor vibes here. Rise and make yourself known to us here tonight. I command you to rise. But apparently his commanding worked. While that's going on, this guy's trying to get Dr. Demento on the radio. Hey, did they actually summon our killer? Because I'd be okay with that. Heck yeah, but wait a minute, that's no sledgehammer. Oh yeah, this dude's got a real pain in the neck. I do appreciate that the killer cleans up after himself though. That's nice. Oh god, house establishing shot. Even though we just spent the entire last scene in the house. Back inside, Arn is riled up. My god, Arn Anderson is setting him up for the choke slam. Look, I don't even know if my JR sucks anymore, but it probably does. Then I can't believe it's not Ric Flair reveals the whole thing was a prank and gets a golden shower for his troubles. Hell yeah. No, no, not like that. A shower of beer. That's golden. Oh good, now the movie is gonna stop the play charades. Will he be able to act out the phrase, this movie sucks? Look out, Oates. She's looking at you like she's a man eater. I also admire the level of commitment required to shoot every shot of this hallway out of focus. I mean, I've seen shot on video adult films with higher production values than this thing. Anyway, Oates and his lady friend head upstairs for some alone time. It's like one on one. And now she's gonna teach him the method of modern love. How many more Hall & songs can I cram into this video? Place your bets now. Um, yeah, I could live without seeing Oates sucking face. I guess her kiss is on his list though. And we're gonna even open the door in slow-mo. This is just egregious slow motion abuse right now. Um, what the fuck is this? While all that's going on, Ric Flair's girlfriend is making a dash for the ladies room. I gotta stop eating those gas station burritos. Man, something really terrible clearly came out of her. <coughs> all right, these guys are about to get hammered. How damn time. With the discovery of their dead friend, Five Below Flare is gonna round up the survivors. <laughs> Look at those feathers. Birds are envious of this dude. And Oates takes the hammer to the chest. This is definitely not a drill. And of course it's in slow-mo. Then we get the slowest chase scene since OJ and Al took off in the Bronco. This guy is giving off strong cowboy Bob Orton vibes. She escapes, but don't worry, Arn's gonna go confront the killer. But all he finds are the corpses and the sledgehammer. From there, he checks back in with the rest of the survivors. Where'd you get that? In the room. Some crazy bastard used it to tear them to pieces. Come on, you can do better. Take it away, Linda. Bastard! Bastard! These two look like they're cutting a promo for Bash at the Beach. If we could just get Tony Schiavone or Gordon Sully between them, it would be perfect. Oh man, this is just some Oscar caliber acting right here. That's stupid. How I told you to shut it. Hold it. Hold it right there. This isn't gonna solve a damn thing. I don't even really care at this point, but it would be cool to know why this dude just materializes out of thin air. Meanwhile, Arn realizes he's late for football practice. And now we can rehash exposition from earlier. They never found the boy. Some think he just flipped out and ran off, maybe trying to find help in the forest. You know, just in case you forgot. Great, we've got a creepy kid now too. Kid, open the door. I just killed a case of old Milwaukee and everyone knows that shit gives you the runs. Oh, what the hell movie? Ah yes, a very subtle metaphor here. I think this symbolizes that Arn is a knob. If you guessed we were gonna drag this out for 10 minutes with super slow-mo, well, give yourself a screenwriter's credit. Or maybe a director's credit. Prior did both, so take your pick. All that so we could find out this is where they keep their Halloween decorations? Look, I don't even know what's going on now. Let's just roll with it. Kinda like a satanic talk show set. It's the kid. It's the goddamn kid. Yeah, sure, whatever. Um, that's no kid. Mankind attacks Arn with the sledgehammer. By God, he could have broken him in half. Arn is really gripping the shaft. Hell yeah. No, not like that, the shaft of the hammer. Settle down, pervs. Somehow all this slow-mo makes this look even faker. They're tussling and it looks bleak until Arn whips out a foreign object while the ref is distracted. Hmm, guess this movie is over early. Sweet. 
It's over. I've reclaimed the TV title. Or not. Our killer is clearly a real backstabber. And the nature boy is not pleased. Bastard! You son of a bitch, where are you? No, no, cut. Is Linda Day George still here? Help him out, please. Bastard! Bastard! Acting face. Stephanie McMahon is not going to stand for this, though. She's going to take out our killer. Honest to God, I had no idea there would be so many wrestling references this week. You're welcome. I bet this is just another night at Steph and Triple H's house, honestly. Flair and his lady friend break in, but our killer is taking a stabatical. Aw, oh, what the hell, movie? How many times are you going to make me ask what the hell? And here's why they never let Ric Flair meet the young fans. But that kid nails him with the chop. Woo! Then he no-sells Flair's punch. Kid's going to grow up to be Goldberg. But at least these two are overselling being terrified. Acting. Jesus, this guy's too stupid looking to be terrifying. Well, so why is he grown up again? Anyway, they square off and Cowboy Bob is tossing the nature boy around like he's a rag doll. In slow motion. Of course. Flair's down for the cow, so that just leaves our final girl. She's brought a bat to a sledgehammer fight. Um, this seems like a weird time to fold your laundry. By God, Sensational Sherry just kneecapped Terry Gordy. Man, I haven't seen a bat beating like this since the end of Casino. I bet she borrowed that bat from Sting. She flees downstairs and uses this cord to block the door. Well, tying this around the knob work? I think not. Oh, wait, she's rigging it to a socket. I feel like someone saw a nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, yeah, this is shocking. But he's still coming. And this is what I do every time someone puts Friends reruns on my TV. And here's a live look at me trying to find the scissors. Hey, Cleaver alone. Anyway, he's about to finish her off, but wait, that's the Nature Boys music. Oh, Jesus, mass cam. I like the Five Below Flair found time to take off his shirt before this final showdown. Look out, Flair's about to lock in the figure four. This match could be over. Oh yeah, it's hammer time. This is like some Hank Aaron shit. Look, Sledgehammer may be an inept piece of filmmaking from a technical standpoint, but goddamn, it's definitely not boring here in the last act. Discount Leatherface is gonna need some Excedrin for that headache. Hey, they made it. Unless there's a swerve ending. Oh yeah, there you go. And cue credits. Oh good, the credits are just gonna rehash all the shit we just watched. Oh my god, special audio sound effects by IP Freely. Very clever, guys. So, what have we learned from Sledgehammer? Well, for starters, that you could basically make a movie with a camcorder, a Casio keyboard, and a few of your drunk buddies. Shot on video horror is something of an acquired taste, but personally, I've always loved it. It's not good in the traditional filmmaking sense, but there's something charming about watching people make slasher movies with a budget funded with the change they scrounged out of their couch cushions. Sledgehammer feels like a student film, but if you like early low-budget shot on video gore, it's not without its charms. Sure, it meanders all over the place, abuses slow motion, and has a cast that makes the performers at your local Ren Fair seem like Bobby De Niro in comparison, but it's still kind of fun. But enough about that. Can Sledgehammer bludgeon its way to a five barf bag rating? Let's go to the gore card! In terms of gross anatomy, this one wasn't quite as gory as I expected. We're treated to some Sledgehammer murders, a knife to the throat, backstabbing, and a cleaver to the chest. The FX are pretty simplistic, but there's just enough here to give this one a middle of the road three barf bag rating. Sledgehammer is a modestly sick flick. Looking for another so bad it's amazing film from the 80s? Then be sure to check out my review of Things. You'll find a link here on the screen. I'll meet you over there. Until next time, I'm Mike Bracken, aka The Horror Geek, bringing you all the splatter that matters.